Well, it looks like today we're doing another install, and this time in the Model Y. What we're gonna be installing today is a soft close mechanism for the frunk. So there is a bit of a range for what you can do to these frunks. The base level for like a 2002 Model Y, which is what this is, the way you close the frunk is you just, when it comes down, you have to put your hands there and then you just press and it closes. And when you go to close the frunk, you push down on both sides until it snaps, sort of like that. You don't wanna push on any one spot because you can actually risk denting the frunk. So on the extreme other side of this, you can install a motorized frunk, which when you press the button, will open it up all the way and close it all the way. I've installed it in my Model 3 and it's great. But if you don't wanna go through that because that's a much more extensive install, you're replacing the struts, you're doing all kinds of different things, then you can do an install like we're doing today, which is kind of like meeting in the middle, where the idea is once we're done with this install, we'll be able to come down here like this and just sort of touch it down and then it will do the rest and pull the lid closed the rest of the way. So here's what we're gonna to do today. We're going to tear all this apart. I'm gonna show you step by step how to do this install. After we'll give it a test and see if I screwed it up. And then at the end, I'll put all the information for this down below in the description in case this is something you wanna to add to your car. And in terms of all of the different tools we're gonna to use to do this, I have no idea what's actually needed. So what we're gonna do is as we go through the video, I'll put it up on the screen, what new tool I'm getting, or maybe I'll just announce it to the camera and you guys can kind of find out that way. And maybe if I'm feeling ambitious, I'll list them all below the video as well. All right, let's get started with the install. All right, so here's basically what it is. Inside of the box, you get this new motorized piece here and you've got some wiring. The idea here is that we're gonna pull off the original latch. We're gonna basically mount them together back inside the car. This doesn't look like it's that complicated of an install. But then again, if you've been around the channel a while, I do have a pass of taking something that is quite simple and making it complicated. So let's get started. So if we take a look at what came inside of the box, we do have have this little motor here we're going to be adding on. We have the wiring harness, one random nut, five zip ties, and this additional patch here that I'm going to be installing on my kit. However, by the time you order this, you probably will not have to do this. So I'm going to put it in the video just in case you do have to, but chances are you won't because this is more of a, a fix that mine doesn't have that they're adding on to new kits that are coming out. All right, so the first step is gonna to be to remove this panel up here and you can just grab it and lift it or you can use a pry tool, but it's really not necessary. Just a little bit of pulling and that's gonna come off. And you can see how these are all on here. They're just little clips that are on there and they spin and they shouldn't come off. They should stay right on the panel, but in the event they do come off on the car, you can just grab them off that and put them back onto the panel. The next step is gonna to be to remove four of these screws here. You got one here, you got another one right there, and then down inside of the front, you have another one right here as well as one over on that side. And so I'm using a 10 millimeter socket. Normally I would use uh, power tools for this, but every time I do that on camera, people yell at me that I'm being rough on my car. So I figured this time, this time I'll humor everybody. Just kidding. So much faster. And I'll point out that all four of these screws are the exact same, so don't worry about which ones came out of which area. Just keep them clumped together somewhere you're not gonna lose them. All right, now you might have guessed that the objective we're going for here is to remove this whole front bin thing here. But before we do that, we have to disconnect this right here. Right behind this is where the whole mechanism is we're going for, the latch, and then this is the button to actually release the frunk. You're gonna need a pry tool for this, but that's pretty much it. So we'll just kind of pop this off. And then under here for the button, you're just gonna grab that wire there and just pull it. It's a little bit more of a fight than I thought it was gonna be. Get out of there, you bastard. And just so everyone's aware, I know I'm making this harder than it needs to be, but there's a little tiny tab right there that sticks up that keeps a plug in. You gotta kinda put pressure on that when you pull it. This is usually where YouTubers cut right to them pulling it and take out all of the work, but I don't do that. I need another tool, something more pokey. I got this thing. I, I think it's used for like self-defense or something. It's always the small things that seem to get me. Yay. All right, now it's mostly ready to come out. There's only one more clip we got to take out and that is right here. This little plastic piece that's holding on right there. So after we get this one clip out, then we'll have removed two screws from the top, two screws from inside. We'll have taken off this panel and that's all you need to get this thing out. All right. All right, so that's the last clip right there. There's two pieces of this, so make sure you keep them both. Don't want to lose one. And now what we do is just lift it out and get it out of the way. Cool. 
So if you've never seen the front of your Tesla without all the plastic in there, this is uh, this is what it looks like. Up here, I believe, is your vent, and this is how I, you know, this is where I keep all my leaves. Very different than the Model Three. Over there, you have stuff and more stuff. What am I saying? I I don't know how any of this stuff is. But I do know this is what we're working with today. So that's gonna be the next step. All right, now that we're about to take this out, there's one step we have to do before we can take out these two bolts right here. And that is unclip this wire here. I have no idea what it does, but it needs to go. So pull out this little tab and then just comes right off. And that made a whole bunch of weird noises. Still making weird noises. Which, by the way, I will tell you, and you've known if you've seen my other installs, that it kind of freaks you out when you start doing installs on your car because this thing, it does. It's always kind of on and it's all computers and wires. So as you start unplugging things and replugging in new kind of foreign things to the car, the car does do these weird adjustments and noises and all this stuff all the time. And it can really freak you out. But so far, the car has never turned on and just went on its own or ran through my garage or any other weird thing, so I'm assuming I'm safe. And of course, you can go inside and power off your car, and if you're really worried about it, you can disconnect the 12-volt battery and different things like that. The reason why I haven't done that on this install is out of the, I don't know, 30 or 40 times I've done installs, every time I've seen to power off the car, I go back in there for some other reason, it's powered itself back on again. There's so many reasons why it repowers itself back on, hitting the brake pedal and other things like that. So I've never really worried about it, but it's probably good practice to go into your dash under your service and just power off the car. In fact, maybe I'll just do that right now just because it, it is the right thing to do. Okay, the button's actually under safety, not under service. But even though I did power off everything in the cab, which is what that is really doing, all the same noises are still happening in here, which is why I don't usually bother to do it. Okay, not to continue to beat a dead horse here because I know you guys already moved past it, but the noise was really bothering me. I think it was actually just the inverter because the car was charging. So I just unplugged the charge cord and all the noises stopped. So if that kind of thing does freak you out, I just wanted to find out how to make it stop in case that makes you uncomfortable. So, all right, next thing. All right, once again, we're gonna get our little hand ratchet and stay away from power tools. Make sure that's on re reverse. Okay, so now the thing to remember is that we are using the same latch mechanism that came on the car. This is not being replaced. We're more or less adding a power unit to it. So the first thing we gotta do here is we're gonna remove this spring, kind of unhook it. So you can see it's in this little hole right here, a part of this. We're gonna just press down, pull that up, and that's just gonna loosen the spring. Don't let it spring too hard, it's gotta still stay in place there. Then I'm gonna add this little patch piece, and again, I don't know if you're gonna to need to do this step or not, but here's how you do it if you do. This is gonna go right on top of this, and then basically fold under. So I'm gonna take this down here, put it down like that, it kind of drops right into place. You can tell when it's in place because it's really firm like that. Now, if there's any one part of this that's gonna be kind of tricky, it's actually installing the motor to it. So just pay close attention to how I'm doing this here. It's really not that complicated. So I'm leaving this spring on. I have seen people take that off, but I'm gonna leave it on. This just basically is gonna go on top of the motorized piece. So you got this piece sitting here in my right hand. My left hand just kind of takes it and puts it right on top. And you can see where these holes line up. And again, you want the piece that's attached to your car to be on top of the motorized piece. From there, I'm gonna get this spring kind of out of the way a little bit. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this clip, this little, I don't know what you call this thing, the part of the motor, and you're gonna put it over top of this round piece here. It's got some extra cable sticking out there. And then once that's hooked on that piece there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna then take your spring, go on top of that piece you just added there. So now the tension is all on that tab there. If you guys can see that. And then we're gonna pull this around again and hook it right back here where we originally took it from. So you just kind of hold it nice and firm. And I will say one thing too, before you go into doing this portion of it, make sure that you got the screws ready to put it back onto the car, that you have them. I just kind of put them in my pocket because the next step now is to screw it back onto the car. So we're gonna take this, make sure the wires are out of the way and put it right back into the holes that we originally took it out of, except this time it's going through both the new part you added in as well as the original piece. Just kind of hand screw them in there. Don't worry guys, I will not put the screws back on with the power tools. See, you all thought I was really gonna use the power tools, weren't you? And this shouldn't mess with the alignment of the latch at all because the latch itself has not changed positions. The motorized portion of this was just added into on top of the original, original latch. 
And there you go. Now it's mounted on there nice and firm. On to the next step. Okay, so now before I go forward with actually wiring in this motorized unit to the car, what I want to do is test this out and make sure that it was all it's all going to go back together and work properly. So I'm going to connect these wires again, as well as to the button, and then freak myself out. Make sure your hands are nowhere near that. Darner gave me a heart attack even though I knew it was coming. So to be safe, I'm gonna disconnect this button again, and then we're gonna move on to wiring in the motor. All right, so let's take a look at the wiring harness here real quick before we actually put it in. So we have three different connections here. So we have this connection here that's gonna actually be connected to the motor. But then you have a red and a black wire, and people pretty much know what's gonna happen next. The black wire we're gonna connect as a ground to some bolt that's connected here in the car, in the front somewhere. And then the red wire here, you got a little inline fuse. This is just gonna be connected directly to the battery itself. So we'll just loosen up the battery terminal a little bit, slide that in, tighten her up, it's good to go. I have like four of these on my Model Y. This is no big deal for the Tesla. So here's the plan. Main connection will go right here. Then I'm gonna run the wires all up along the side, all the way up here, and I'm gonna loosen this bolt, and that's where I'm gonna put the ground. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to where my light is, and you can see down here is where the battery is, and we'll just connect it right there. Okay, step one, connect the motor, just plug the male into the female. Next, I'll take this black ground wire right here, and I'm gonna slide it underneath of the washer, it down here, and then just tighten that up. Keep in mind also to point the wire kind of towards the side of the car here, because we're gonna be tucking wires in all along the side here. If it's shooting out that way, it's just gonna get in the way. Here we go, got a good ground. And when it comes to the red hot wire, that's where this little nut comes into play that was part of the kit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the wire up around here like this, don't drop that nut. Then you can see here, there's this, you know, this red piece we had in here. You're gonna pull off this bolt. You got this tall bolt right here, that's actually, a hot bolt, I guess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just put this on and tighten it on with a nut. All right, so I'm gonna get it mostly on here. Lots of sharp plastic to rub against your fingers. Snap that into place. See a couple little sparks when you put it on there. Don't worry, you made a connection. I'm gonna get it just kind of hand tight. Not gonna over worry about it too much. Snug on there like that. Replace the red cap. Okay, so here's how this came together. Started off by putting the little control box here tied to this wire. Then I ran the wire like this. It's kind of loose right here, and that's okay because it's gonna be all underneath of their big bin here. But I ran it up, put a zip tie right here, then I put another zip tie right here and try to include some of these little wires for the ground and the hot wire. But you could definitely get more zip ties and, and tie a lot more of this down if you really wanted to. But I'm going to keep it loose because I don't really know what the concave of that plastic piece is for the front. So I want this to be able to kind of sink a little bit and not be pulling on anything. Now, normally I would suggest that before we put all this back together, we do like a trial run and like try to see if it closes or whatnot. But because the latch didn't move location, and I know this is wired properly because it's pretty hard to screw it up, I'm just gonna put it all back together. I'll probably regret it and have to fix something, but let's just get it in and get it done. Make sure when we do this here to pull out the wire that's gonna go into the button. Get this all lined up. Make sure no wires are being pinched anywhere. And there's little clips around the side that don't necessarily attach to the frunk. It just more or less holds it like this kind of a thing. So just make sure that they're in the right places. And then the, all the other clips should line up just fine. I'm gonna start by using and putting in the little clip here. First, we took off from that side and you may have to kind of peel back some of these to get it out. You want it to be kind of detached. This goes inside the hole first to get it in. And then this piece goes into that after. What I'm gonna do next, I'm actually gonna attach the button. Before I actually bolt these all back on, I will give it a trial run because that, you know, does make sense. When you put this on though, it's the top are snaps, but the, the bottom goes in. So you kind of go down like this and then snap back. So you kind of slide it down, make sure the bottom is gripped. Now we're good to try it out. So if you're following along here, the only pieces I did not put back in yet are the, is the cover up here, that plastic cover, and then the four bolts that hold the front plastic in place. So the way I think this works, because I've never done this yet, is I think we just push this down and it's supposed to just sort of grab it and latch it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yes. First try, baby. That is so sick. So many times when I do installs, it's like half of it goes in or some crazy thing. 
that worked flawlessly. I just barely let it drop and just grabbed it and it is flush. See this right here? It pulled it down. I've installed different frunks that were like motorized frunks that lift the whole thing up and down and have them be like a little bit higher or just weren't lined up quite right. But this one is so simple. It works so good. All the lines are perfect. Everything, everything just worked. So now the question is what happens if I tell it to open? What does that look like? So let's spin the camera the other direction here. Let's take a look here. So I'm on the app right now, the Tesla app, and let's hit open frunk. Okay, so that's all just the same. Let's try this again. Lift up, just kind of let it drop. Easy. One of the easiest installs ever done. All right, now that it's all done, I'm just gonna go back in and put all the bolts in. You guys don't need to watch me do that. It's just four bolts zzz, in and done. So what do you guys think about this one? On the level of difficulty, I would say that it's somewhere because we did have to take out bolts. We did have to, you know, access the battery. We did to run some wires. I would put it at a difficulty level of about four. And for context, a 10 would be like when I put in the motorized frunk or trunk where back when I did that before, when we didn't used to come with them, you know, you're splicing wires and all this other stuff. It's way more involved, way more plastic is coming off of the car, or maybe the stereo system where I rewired the entire car, added amps, all that kind of stuff to the car. That would be like a, I would say like, a, that would be like an eight to 10, okay, on the scale of things that I have done. Obviously there's much more advanced modifications. Whereas like a one would be a screen protector. Okay, so this would be like, uh, this would be like a level four. So let me know what you guys think about this install. You think it's worth it, not worth it? I think for the price, it's definitely worth consideration. And for all that information, I'll put it down below in the description of this video, as well as any current discounts or sales going on. And I think at the time this video is coming out, there is a big sale on this item. So make sure you check it out and take advantage if this is something that you guys are interested in. And of course, leave your comments down below in the comments section. Leave your questions down below in the comment section. And I will try to get back to them within the next 24 months. Hours, 24 hours. See you guys on the next one.